The seventeenth Sunday after Pentecost. Year B. From the first of the Psalms. The righteous are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. In the name of the one in whom is all prospering, even the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise of wisdom and righteousness characterizes our readings for this week. In a desert landscape, tender tree leaves indicate access to life-giving water. By implication, in a spiritual landscape parched by a lengthy moral dry spell, the prosperous deeds of the righteous point others to the living power of God, present within reach of roots, thirsty for divine inspiration. The arguing of the disciples about which among them is the greatest does not point to God in this way, even though Jesus is right there in their midst. Jesus has just been speaking to them about his impending death and resurrection, the greatest manifestation of God's love. But the disciples don't get it, perhaps because they haven't seen it yet. So Jesus has to get more explicit. Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Jesus then goes further, bringing a child into their midst and saying that whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The recipient of service, of hospitality, is the child, the one who is least likely to have anything to give in return. Jesus thus bids us each to become like the capable and generous wife of Proverbs, who laughs at the time to come, because she's provided for her household, so that no one within need fear hunger or cold or folly, nor does her stewardship stop at the door, for she opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. James, likewise, commends to the church the bride of Christ, works done with gentleness, born of wisdom, setting aside envy and selfish ambition, and instead being ready and willing to do with no trace of partiality or hypocrisy. When we make space for another through generosity and hospitality, rather than through the hope or fear of return, others are drawn into the space that our generosity and hospitality have made. When we draw near to God, extending our roots towards God's life-giving water, the knowledge of divine love draws up into the pull of our perception, giving strength to our limbs and bright, fresh green to our leaves. Come, therefore, let us adore him, who is Father, Son, 